Hello and welcome to our next episode with how to build the perfect content cluster for better SEO. Today as my guest is Georgie, Georgie from RE7 Consulting, our SEO expert. Hello Georgie, nice to have you here. Hello, thanks for the invitation. How are you today? Really good, you? Yeah. Also fine, looking forward to discuss this topic with you. Um, before we start, can you tell me a bit more about yourself? Um, How, how did you come to us? What did you do before? Uh, yes, so um, I'm Georgie, a dedicated sales specialist with a passion for boosting digital presence. I started learning SEO in college uh, after I finished a basic marketing course from mm -hmm. Google. And I pretty much fell in love with SEO and decided that's the thing that I want to do in the future. I used to work at Altex, an e-commerce company that sells electronics and household appliances. Mm -hmm. where I spent almost two years running various SEO campaigns. Now I'm with the talented folks at Re7, a digital marketing that is as diverse as my client portfolio, because I work with clients from different industries like e-commerce, automotive, tourism, hospitality, beauty, fashion, real estate, basically all the industries. You call it, you make it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love everything and every moment that I spend here and I work closely with my clients to understand their needs because I think this is the most important important part of my job mm -hmm. and the thing that I like to tell about myself is that I can communicate better than um, every uh, the Google's algorithm or update because they don't communicate uh, every update they're making. Of course and also they need a translator I mean if you see something coming up the client sometimes doesn't know what it means and you can you can explain what it means and um, you still need some human touch in it that GPT is not is not a solution for everything from my point of view. No, definitely not. I mean currently, currently. Let's let's see maybe in a few years. Um, so today we talk about topic clusters. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, can you explain what content clusters are and why why they have gained popularity in, in recent years? Yes, I think they gained popularity in recent years because this, uh, it's a new sales strategy that focuses more on topics rather than just simple keywords to improve your site architecture and making it easier to Google to discover the relevant content and also to boost uh, your search engine visibility. Um, That's uh, now there's a change in behavior uh, when people are searching something uh, on Google. Uh, mm -hmm. And they assume that people can, uh, the, the engines can understand the intent. So people now are not looking all just for simple keywords. They asking questions, for example, where I should go for dinner or where is the best, uh, I don't know, perfume for women or something like that. And for us, the uh, sales specialists or for the small business owner, um, it's a challenge because uh, we have to adapt to this new uh, mm -hmm. behavior change and to implement sales strategy that reflects this changing uh, in search behavior. We need to prepare for this and to adapt to what users are looking for. I, I fully understand. So it's like kind of like something, something new in order to help with the SEO. I mean, besides the, the classical things that we, oh. we, we know already, like link building and so on and off page and so on on page optimization of the page this is like something that helps you to boost your ranks in general as yes. i understood yeah and it's also free because it's organic you just uh, write content for your uh, for your audience and so you you help the user basically to uh to get the, the things that they want to get that information to get the mm -hmm. product And how, how does it differ from traditional content strategies? The... Uh, yeah, the basic content strategy was just doing the keyword research, looking for the volumes and try to incorporate those keywords in your content to gain the volume uh, and to, uh, to have traffic on your website. But mm -hmm. now it's focused more on the client needs and um, uh, Google prefers uh, sites that have uh, Uh, interconnected content and not just simple keywords because when you're writing a blog article or a blog post uh, you put their keywords and yeah the main uh, the main focus is to to gain traffic 
but in the end when you look at every everything in your blog it's uh, disorganized you just have uh, pieces of content that probably people are not interested then and they mm -hmm. enter your blog and read everything is there so i think uh, you need to know exactly what is the search intent and what are what people are looking for okay and the content clusters help us because it builds these content clusters and it gives the user when when he comes to our website the relevant information and somehow probably you lead him with the content cluster through through the page mm -hmm. which is also like what google wants you i mean google wants you to keep to see to see that that your website is relevant for the user but also of course most of the website have google analytics integrated so they also know how long the user spends on the website um and this yes, is probably can... also a factor You can import data from Google Analytics, but uh, it's good to keep in mind that users uh, uh, need to have uh, um, the structure really, really clear. So the site architecture is really, really important when you're doing this uh, topic cluster model. Okay, so I wanted to ask you as the next question, why are content clusters so effective for SEO? Mm -hmm. I think you answered it already because, I mean, this is the, the key. So... Um, so how, how do they improve then the user experience from your point of view, the content clusters? Well, because you have uh, a main topic, then you have mm -hmm. the clusters, you have the subtopics. When the a people, when a person is looking for, I don't know, perfume, you have perfume for ladies, for niche perfume, you have uh, perfume, what perfume you should buy for your mother, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have all those suggestions suggestion the content suggestion that can lead to other pages on your website and it's good when you're writing the blog articles to put uh, a hyperlink to your categories on subcategories and the user when is reading the article will go through all those links to see mm -hmm. what uh, what's the best uh, perfume for him or her okay so so it As we discussed before, it leads the user somehow through the website without pressing on the, you know, the two arrows on the on the browser back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's like the natural way that the user gets the content that he needs in in the specific time. And um, when we look now for the implementation and planning of such key um, topic topic clusters, um, how does one begin to organize the existing content into clusters i mean imagine you have already like a website or an online shop they have already blog articles and so on so how how does it work how would you organize it or how is the workflow uh well if you have existing content the best way is by start uh, identifying pillar topics and related subtopics from mm -hmm. what you already written there um um After you do this, you just uh, update your content if you think uh, it needs to be updated. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about uh, the internal linking because this is the more important. When you establish the pillar and the clusters, you have to link the pillar with the clusters and the clusters with the pillar back. So we need to keep in mind this strategy. My recommendation also, if you have an e-commerce, when you link the everything in your blog post, don't forget to put internal linking with your categories of categories. I don't rec recommend to link a product there because uh, when the product is out of stock, uh, user user can find it anymore. It's a little bit annoying. So I recommend just of put course. the categories on in subcategories. Yeah. If you're doing from scratch, I think the, bo the best thing is to do uh, to perform a really well keyword research mm -hmm. and to organize all your keywords in topics. And after that, you used to, um, you then start to uh, create content. So for us would be like, how would you, I mean, we have already content clusters, but how is it organized for us then with the content clusters? Well, for us, it's pretty simple. We have the, um, the blog section uh, of organizing teams. We have uh, the main team, for example, SEO. And from SEO, we have all those pieces of content, how to, uh, I don't know, how to 
choose the, the best SEO agency for you, how to rank faster, how to choose the keywords, how mm -hmm. to perform the keywords. Those are, are the clusters to our pillar, which is SEO. You write a piece of content that uh, is really broad and covers all the all the things, and then you go on specific topics and create another blog post. Uh, and don't forget to link to each other. Of course, of course, <laughs> I understood. I mean, this is this is the really important message what I got. Um, don't forget to link. Good. Um, another thing that you mentioned, I mean, the internal linking is really, really important for this entire topic cluster because um, I guess also the Google, the Google bot, when it crawls your website, goes then on the website and if there are lots of internal links, it stays longer there and it sees that somebody put some effort in it in order to see what is relevant and how is it connected to another article, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of the main uh, benefits, the SEO boost, because the internal linking with content cluster can help boost the SEO performance of your pillar content, increasing uh, the search engine rankings and also the authority. I see. Um, are there specific tools or platforms that you that can assist with creating and managing content clusters? Ah, uh, yes. For tools, I recommend and I also use uh, Everyday Href for the keyword research. Now they have a new feature mm -hmm. that can allow you to um, to cover all the topics and to organize them in uh, clusters. Uh, mm -hmm. Or SEMrush does the same thing. I use ChatGPT or other tools that create content. I use also uh, Surfer SEO uh, for creating the content. Um, and Google Search Console for ranking and to uh, monitorizing the, the results. Okay. I would also say, I mean, we will put the tools in, in our description mm -hmm. under, under the YouTube. So people can look it up and if they have further questions, they can also write us directly in the comment section if they have some their own tools that they can recommend, which is also interesting for us because there are so many tools on the market. Of course, what we have to mention, we have mainly the Romanian market. So some tools are not designed mainly for the Romanian market and don't work so good in the Romanian market, as we know, because... Um, The English market is by far more interesting for these big providers of tools. Um, so it's really hard to find a good tool that covers the, the Romanian market. Um, do you have a case study where um, content clusters are well implemented from your point of view? Mm -hmm. Besides our website, of course. Uh, yes, I did a little research and I chose Natina, which is a Romanian e-commerce with uh, cosmetics and beauty products. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a really nice um, um, website. Um, mm -hmm. If you enter on a women's perfume, let you cannot just, find. Let me just check it out. Can you see it now? Uh, yes. Perfect. Okay, so you have uh, after the product listings. Uh, it's okay, we are now here just just for our users. So we are here under mm -hmm. um, frequencies, frequencies for, for you. Mm -hmm. And now when I'm scrolling down through the products. Yes. And now in the news from uh, beauty industry, you can see some blog articles associated with the product range that uh, are displayed. So what does this here mean? Something with um, pepper or? Uh, yes, what to choose between fig or pepper. Uh, I think there's a recommendation for a niche perfume. Okay, let's click on it. Mm -hmm. So they already know that the intent for users, are, some people are uh, really interested in niche perfumes. So they make mm -hmm. uh, a really nice piece of content. Uh, they describe in the perfumes and also they will give you some um, suggestions from their website. You can see the products also incorporated there. Another products. And then there's a link to another pieces of content. And you can go if you're interested about uh, Halloween because now is the trend with Halloween. We yeah. can have their suggestions for makeup, for example. Nice. So what what we just did, we didn't use any any arrows here. It just mm -hmm. 
it just lead us through through the website and to the blog in order to get more relevant information that might be useful for us. And then we also have um, the blog. Uh, yes, uh, going beyond just using the keywords that bring traffic to the site, uh, based on the topic cluster model, you can see they have a really nice um, structure. They're based on trends. Uh, in the menu up, you can see oh, the... Sorry, here, 10 10 they didn't say those are the trends where you can find ideas and products that are really trending, tutorials, step-by-step uh, -step process, ideas, and reviews. And many, cost many customers buy based on other people's uh, experience with the product. Um, so it's really important to have also reviews on your website. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 fully, I fully agree with you. Um, yeah, that was a nice case study. Um, so, um, how do you see to, to end our podcast with the last question, what are your, the common challenges, um, that a business is facing when implementing content clusters? Well, the challenges are my favorite part, uh, for those who want to implement the cluster st strategy, they should, uh, they should be patient for the, first of all, they should constantly measure the results. Uh, they should update the contents when they see that uh, it's not bringing any results. And if uh, if you're doing yourself or you're a small business owner and you can do it by yourself or you can see any results, I recommend to return to specialists in an agency and uh, to trust them because probably they will do the best for your uh, for your business. And we'll yeah, I mean, as I understood you need to have a consistent strategy. So mm -hmm. you need to create article after article, you need to link it, you need to do keyword research. And as we all know, um, when you run a business, there are so many things to do. So to to keep the consistency is, I think this is the hardest part. I mean, yes. even even for for bigger businesses and therefore it's good to get some external help in order to keep this consistency that somebody is putting out this article, at least one article per week, doing the internal linking, maybe doing also the off pages and so on. So, um, yeah, I mean, what you just said, the best is to have somebody external. Of course, if they want to work with us, with you, just contact us um, through our website and I think we covered everything of content mm -hmm. justice. I don't know. I don't have anything anything else to mention. Me neither. I hope it was everything clear. Yes, and um looking forward with you to be on our next episode regarding regarding search engine optimization. Um for our viewers and listeners, please subscribe and follow us on YouTube, on Spotify, Google, Apple, where you're listening to us. And have a lovely day. Thank you, Georgie, Thank you so for having much. you here. Bye. Bye-bye.